<laughs> well, good morning, and it is good to be in worship uh, uh, with us today. We welcome our ACU Lady Wildcats. Coach Goodenough, we welcome your team here this morning. Thank you for being with us. Um, you know, uh, Coach Goodenough, I reached the height of my athletic ability in the eighth grade, okay? Uh, Strock Intermediate Cougars, I was the starting left guard, and we won the district championship that year, and it's been downhill ever since. Uh, my musical ability, ability is probably not the word for that, because when I was in high school, uh, we started this youth praise team, and I thought, well, I'll learn the drums. And so my brother had a drum set, so I started to play the drums. And when I learned that the name going around the church for our startup praise team was the Offbeats, I decided I probably better try my hand at something else. The truth is, we all have different gifts. That, you see, God puts different gifts, talents, and abilities in each one of us to equip his people, to equip the church to be all that God desires for the church to be, to serve the church, to build up the church, to equip the family of faith, which God has called us to, to be all that God has commissioned us to in his kingdom. This morning we're in our theme passage, Romans chapter 12. Uh, feel free to go ahead and turn there now if you'd like. Last week we looked at verses 3 through 5, that we see ourselves as part of Christ's body, that we belong to one another. We don't attend Pioneer Drive. We belong to Pioneer Drive. We belong to a local church family. So let's all stand as we read Romans chapter 12, verse 6. We've got to stand quickly because if you, if you take a minute, you're going to miss it, all right? We're going to, in fact, we're going to say it together. We have different gifts. That's our focal passage. We have different gifts. Thank you. You may be seated. We have different gifts. I want that truth, that truth to sink in this morning. We have different gifts. Because within the local church, God has designed it this way. That there is a diversity of gifts. God ordains that. God ordains that diversity of gift. God has granted a diversity of gifts to meet such a great diversity of needs. God has granted a diversity of gifts to meet such a great diversity of needs. You know, sometimes I think one of the things that holds people back from serving in the church is that they feel like they haven't discovered how their gift fits into the overall body. Uh, sometimes people uh, shy away from serving because they don't think they're skilled enough to do this or that or not as skilled as that person to do this or that. Here's the truth. Every single one of you, every single one of us has been given a gift for the specific purpose of serving the church. And shrinking back from that gift is making you less of who God wants you to be. You are unique. You are unique. God has gifted you, specifically you, to be exceptionally and outstandingly you. No one on earth, no one throughout all history can be a better you than you. And we may get discouraged because you think, you look at other people and you think about their incredible abilities. I can't play guitar like that. I can't sing like that. I can't preach like that. I can't organize or I can't build or I can't account or I can't coordinate technology or, or whatever. But, but God has granted a diversity of gifts to meet such a great diversity of needs. And so therefore, don't let someone else's gift discourage you from exercising your own. Don't let someone else's gift, their talents, their skills, their abilities, discourage you from exercising your own. If you see people with the ability to do something that you can't do, thank God for them. 
Because they're meeting a need that you may not be the best one equipped to meet. But you don't have to be a skilled musician. I'm thankful for that. You don't have to be a great teacher to serve the church. There are a diversity of gifts that God gives. Can you open a door? Can you help carry things on the platform? Can you say hello? Can you shake a hand? Can you point a camera? You see, there are countless ways to be a part of what happens here on a Sunday morning. Can you, can you offer a prayer for somebody? Because we have different gifts, and we have to consider what it means to serve the church with passion and purpose. But here's what I want you to know. You've heard this before, but it's really important. Every member, every member is a minister. Every servant of our Lord Jesus Christ is a minister of the gospel. Every believer, men, women, all ages. You know, I have the privilege of, of standing on the platform and, and teaching the Bible and try to encourage people in their faith. But well before I ever did this, you know the first thing I volunteered to do, for, do at Pioneer Drive? I came here 20 years ago. College students, we're welcoming college students back right now. They're having a brunch this morning. It was this Sunday about 20 years ago. It was my first day here. The first thing I said yes to doing was Tuesday nights, we would set up for Wednesday night middle school worship in the gym. And I would set up lights and sound. I didn't know the last thing about those things, but they had a need. And I said, I've got a willing heart to serve. You see, that's the spirit. No matter what you do, no matter what role you play in the Pioneer Drive family, on the Pioneer Drive team, you have a role to play. The truth is, the gospel ministry is happening all around us by the members of Pioneer Drive, young and old, boys and girls, men and women, holding a door for someone who's not sure about this church thing is gospel ministry. Offering a sincere welcome and a warm smile to someone who's feeling lonely or lost is gospel ministry. Encouraging someone to take a next step, to join a Sunday school class or a small group, to lean into the community of the local church, it's gospel ministry. Taking a baby for an hour or so so mom and dad can have a distraction-free morning is gospel ministry. I mean, You should do that as a member of our Pioneer Drive Preschool ministry. Don't just take a baby for an hour, but you know what I mean. (laughs) Running slides and lights and sound, logistics of the service, making sure that happens is gospel ministry. Praying over someone when they're walking through grief or loss or pain is gospel ministry. These are things we do, a part of the family of God. Offering friendship to the newcomer and welcome to the stranger, that's gospel ministry. But to do all of these things, for Pioneer Drive to be the unique that Pioneer Drive has called us to be, it requires a wide diversity of gifts and it requires everybody, everybody, 100% participation, using their gifts, their talents, and abilities. It it can be so easy, and there's plenty of people on social media and elsewhere that that, that talk about this, to to blame the church for some unmet expectation that they aren't contributing to. The church is all of us contributing to something greater together. The church is all of us Contributing to something greater together. Every member is a minister. Every member is a minister. So let's go on, continue reading Romans chapter 12. We got, we have different gifts. We got that, didn't we? Okay. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is To encourage, then give encouragement. If it is giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, (coughs) do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. You know, all these words 
meant something a little bit different in the Romans' context than it does in ours. For example, serving wasn't a catch-all term for volunteering like we might use it. Paul is speaking here of something more akin to serving a meal or physically helping meet the needs of someone else. The point of the passage is right here. The point of the passage is right here. That God has gifted you. God has gifted you to serve the church. And each member, each member is expected to serve according to the grace God has given them. You don't have to be somebody else. You don't have to be somebody else. But you are called to be the you that God called you to be with what he's given you. Because when we don't serve, when we say, now I've done my time, when we, when we don't serve, when we say, well, somebody else will do it. Well, there, there's a group of people and they kind of just take care of those things. When we don't serve, we are withholding from the body, from the family, the gifts God has given us. We are withholding from ourselves the blessing of being a part of what God is doing in our midst. And so if you're a member of Pioneer Drive, or if you're thinking about being a member of Pioneer Drive, I want you to hear what's really important to us today. And and what we expect, because if you're a member of Pioneer Drive, you have been entrusted with the stewardship of Pioneer Drive. It's it's our church. Really, we know it's Jesus' church. But but it's our mission to build, to support, to offer time, to offer our treasure, to offer our talent for its good. When we talk about serving, what we're doing is we're talking about everybody doing their part to make Pioneer Drive an outpost of the kingdom of God, a little bit of heaven in Abilene. We talked like last week about the church being an embassy and each member an ambassador. Paul said this in 2 Corinthians. He said, we, we are therefore Christ's ambassadors as though God were making his appeal through us. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us. You see, when you serve, no matter what you do, you're a part of sharing the gospel. You're a part of this body. Sharing the gospel, the eternity-changing news of Jesus Christ Because what God is doing through us, this is so important, this is so important, that what God is doing through us is God is, and and I don't understand why God chose to do it this way, but this is why God chose to do it this way, and so I'm going to take God at his word. But, But God is making his appeal for salvation, where we spend our eternity. God is making his appeal for reconciliation. God is making his uh, appeal for spiritual health and, his, and wholeness and community and relationship through you, through the church, not any other entity, not any other organization. And, and that is why serving the church matters so much because as, as good as colleges and, and university and as good as social workplaces are and as good as government can be or can't be at times, God's not making his appeal through those entities. God's making his appeal through the church. Through you and me. And that's part of why we commit to doing a, several sermons a year about it. Because we have different gifts. And, and as we've talked about frequently, in our culture, everywhere we go, there's, there's this consumer mentality. What's in it for me? What do I get? But the mindset of a servant is different, isn't it? Because it's about seeing the church not as a place where you are served or where I am served, but it's a family with whom you serve. It's a family with whom you serve. It's about discovering how God's wired you, your, your gifts, talents, abilities, and, and using them not just for yourselves, 
but for the glory of Jesus Christ and for his kingdom, for the good of your neighbor. It's about being open-handed with your life and asking God, God, how do you want to use me? How do you want to use me as a part of your body? How do you want to make your appeal through me, Lord? I'm your ambassador. How do you want to, want to do that? How do you want to do that? How do you want to do that through me? Say, preacher, how do I know what gift I have? And there can be, there, there's some great biblical texts we can walk through, and we, our ministers can do that with you to help you do that. Here's how I've often found you find your gift by practicing. Just having a willing heart. And you learn, you know, that didn't really, I didn't come alive with that. But I tried this over here. And that's where I really discovered this is a gift. And then other people start to say, you know, you really have. I see God working through you. I see God making his appeal through you in this area. And so other people can help do that. But that, that, that can be a, a good conversation for a different day. But let me, let me make this point. People don't stay at Pioneer Drive because they love the building. People don't visit and stay at Pioneer Drive because of the programming. I hope it's good programming. And I hope our facilities are presentable. They don't visit Pioneer Drive and stay because of the preaching. I'd love to think that. But I know better. When I visit with people, when I talk with them, when we hear their stories, when our staff hear their stories, you know what makes someone stay at Pioneer Drive? Right here. Because you make them feel like family. That, that's the whole, most common thing we, we hear from people. It just feels like family. And I know that's not the experience 100% of the time. I, that's what we aim for. So, so if, if maybe you've had a different experience here. Well, we could use your help. And for those of us who've been here a while, nobody wants us to, walk, nobody wants to show up and watch us hang out with our friends. We've got to be an ever-expanding family. To, to be those kind of people who open up our circles, who open up our lunch tables, who open up our, our hangout times with our friends to make other people feel like they're home. In today's age of, of live streaming from anywhere and having uh, the best preaching and teaching and music is all right here on the phone. You can get it. You get the best in the world. Some of the most historic preachers all right here. You see, I believe with all the technological advancement, artificial intelligence, which just blows my mind, and I don't even know what all that means, the local church has something that no technology will ever supplement. And that is human to human connection. A community that's built by a mutual submission and a love for the way of Jesus. That's why I'm very optimistic about the future of the local church. Because serving is all about connecting with other people. It's making them feel welcomed. It's walking alongside each other as we seek to follow Jesus and picking each other up because there's going to be moments when we fall. There's going to be moments when we blow it big time. There's going to be moments when we raise our hands in victory because we see some great things God's doing. We talk a lot about family here because that's really at the core of who we are as a church. We love each other. We share with one another. We pray with one another. We hold one another accountable. We serve one another. We, we forgive one another. And as we do that, we share the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. We share our lives as well. So one of our core values that you see a lot is we are an ever-expanding family. How we say it around here and, and what kind of gives us direction and orientation is we say, we will. And this is a bold statement because, again, I know we're not perfect, and I know we don't, we don't bat a thousand on this. 
But we will authentically model God's radical love in our multi-generational fellowship by inviting and including people from all walks of life to share their lives together in the gospel. We're an ever-expanding family. We share our lives. We do our part. It's not my church. It's not your church. It's our church. And we have to joyfully celebrate the responsibility that comes with that. Because it's not just about filling a spot. It's not about standing at a door, and it's not about playing an instrument. It's about doing your part to create an environment where it's easy for people to connect with God and find a family. And it takes all of us. It takes all of us to be at our best. We need your talents. We need the unique ways that God has equipped you. And when each member does that, their part, it, it's a beautiful whole. It's one of the things going on on our campus today among the many things that we have is we have a volunteer fair. You're like, Pastor, I need to find my spot. Today's a great day to be here because in Curry's Corner, in our atrium, and up in our Sky Bridge, and they have maps at each location. So if you can get to the blue wall, we can help get you where you need to go. But we have different tables set up and different ways you might begin to discover the purpose that God has for you. So do that today, before you go to Sunday school or after Sunday school, sometime this morning. Stop by one of those tables. You know, <clears throat> we've used this analogy from time to time. But we keep coming back to it because it's really good and it's very true. The church... Pioneer Drive. Local churches are a mosaic. Think about a mosaic for a moment. What is a mosaic? Maybe we need to start there. It's a beautiful picture. And that beautiful picture, though, is composed of many different, unique, smaller pieces that are brought together for a larger design and a larger purpose. And when you look at a, if you were to zoom in on a mosaic, it, the picture isn't always clear close up. It may look like a grouping of misfit sizes and shapes and colors, but it's only when you take a step back that you can see the larger design clearly. The individual pieces are essential because there would be no mosaic without them. But the meaning is found only when they are viewed as a whole. Because the overall amazing picture isn't imposed on the individual pieces. It's derived from them. The mosaic is a collection of photos of different people. And I think it's a it's a perfect representation, the one up here, a mosaic, a collection of photos from many different people. To me, it's a, it's a perfect representation of the church. And why giving of our time, treasure, and talent is so important? Because we have been commissioned, commissioned by God, to carry forward the work of Jesus. And no one person, no one team, no one staff member can do that alone. But when we all come together, together, as a family, with one heart and one goal, that's when the Spirit does things in us and through us that we could never have done, never have done on our own. That's when the church really becomes the body, the body of Christ, serving together and body in Christ's work. Here's couple of questions I want you to think about this week, this morning. Just two. What's your gift? Do you need help discovering that? I think a lot of times we learn that by trying things out. Trying things out. Having a, a willingness to serve. Maybe you would want to visit with one of our staff members to help you figure that out. You're welcome to do that. Fill out that card in the pew in front of you and just write a little note. You'd like to talk to a staff member about your gift. What is your gift? And how are you using your gift to serve the church? 
How are you using your gift to serve the church? I want to close by sharing with you a quote from David Cassidy. He's a pastor. He said this recently. He said, the best churches aren't measured by their numbers, but by living as humble communities of people with long tables, big hearts, open ears, perceptive vision, and open hands that invite everyone in to the feast of the kingdom. Let's pray. Father, we come to you and are thankful that we've been included in the family of God, your family. <clears throat> we think about, Lord, the people who have poured into us over the years, who have shaped us, who have challenged us, who have loved us, who have held our hands through life's victories and life's defeats. We say thank you for them. Lord, help us all to seize this moment, this day, this season, to use what it is you have given us to serve this body. And may we serve it really, really well. Lord, lead this time. Lead your church. And may we all serve as you have gifted us to do so. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.